And thank you all for being here today. Thanks for sticking it out all afternoon, all morning. Uh, my name is Anthony Gardner. I'm from the USA. My teammates, Scott Richardson from South Korea. Where is he? <laughs> oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, South Africa, I'm sorry. <laughs> Mauricio Matos from Brazil, and Sydney Q from China. Um, Scott and I are former athletes. Scott more recently has been working with athlete development in Qatar. Uh, Mauricio has uh, been working with athlete representation, management in Sao Paulo. And Cindy is an accountant in uh, Hong Kong, or was an accountant in Hong Kong. But she really likes sports, so it's very, very relevant. Um, our project consisted of mapping and uh, researching the best practices in athlete support. Uh, in regards to the retirement process. Um, I think you'll notice that our relevant backgrounds uh, played a huge role in this throughout the course of the project. It was very relevant. Um, at this point, I'll, I'll hand it over to Scott and we'll go through the project. Thanks, Anthony. So, good afternoon, everybody. I just want to outline the project. Our client was the International Olympic Committee, and within that, the Athlete Career Program. We work very closely with Hisham and Chantal, and we're very happy with the uh, progress that we made on this project. This was also in collaboration with ADECO. So we had a very clear aim from the, the client in terms of researching international uh, athlete career transition programs, as well as identifying unique and innovative methods within the programs. So just to give you an overview, that athlete career transition programs is part of the Agenda 2020 with the Olymp Olympic Committee. They've got two key points here that they identified. One is the IOC to put the athlete experience at the heart of the Olympic Games, and the second point is the IOC to, play, to further invest in supporting athletes on and off the field of play. So where did we come into this uh, field? We had to look for unique international practices around the world, looking at different programs and different athlete career transition programs that had a platform that we could use to share knowledge between them. So we identified two objectives with our client. The first one was to identify three unique attributes and within these unique attributes, they had to be adaptable, so we could use them everywhere. They had to add value to the current ACP program, um, and they had to have a value that would help the athlete transition from being an athlete into a career. And then the second one was to create a, an ideal holistic approach program, which we did, which ended up being part of seven attributes, and I'll talk you through that a little later. So to start with, we sat with uh, the team from the IOC, and we started with a really broad scope of 40 different organizations around the world, and then we started to bring it into narrow it down to 10 that we actually evaluated in the end. So I'll just go through them so you can see we had a very good scope of places around the world and different types of organizations that we looked at. What we really wanted to get was different cultures, we wanted to get different types of programs being profit and non profit, and we wanted to get what different organizations have done successfully and what other organizations have learned from this. So given that pretty broad spectrum of organizations, our methodology was both quantitative and qualitative. So we sat with the IOC team, we prepared a questionnaire which had six separate categories. We had a letter from them asking for approval that they could actually go ahead and uh, finish this questionnaire and why they were doing this. Um, and then we also did some of our independent research in cases where we didn't get any feedback from the clients or not the clients, but the organizations. From that, we prepared an individualized report on each of these programs that we assessed. Uh, we used a ranking system in order to understand what worked and what didn't work within the different places. We followed the BIDBIS system here, which is basic indicators for best practice in international sport, or basic indicators for uh, best practice in international sport. In terms of attributes identified, um, we used the report and the ranking system to narrow it down to identify these three unique attributes. With that, we also found a lot of other key attributes along the way. So we actually expanded it to seven. But I'll start with the three unique that we identified for the IOC and, what, and why we identified them. The first unique attribute was program structure. With this, we mean we had identified programs around the world, and one in particular that had a very unique partnership and sponsorship model. What did they do here? They used the partnership sponsorship models to help promote, market, and fund the program using a tiered sponsorship model of having, for example, a bronze sponsor, a silver sponsor, a gold sponsor, a platinum sponsor. And they contributed to the delivery of the program through both credibility of the partner, through industry experts, 
sharing knowledge between the program and their, their area of in expertise in the industry, knowledge transfer between athletes, the industry, and the programs. Big one. And in terms of finance and strategy on financing the program through different tiered sponsorship models and also in value in kind and also in helping athletes in terms of giving them internships. So the second attribute we found was program promotion. What was this was is an interactive athlete platform which was used to help with the communication process of athletes. It's very convenient because it could be used anywhere around the world. It was available to both the coaches, stakeholders, entourage, and sponsors. Um, in terms of it being centralized, what happens is the athletes enrolled in this once he's part of the National Federation. Um, all stakeholders have an access to this. There's a security setting along the way so that you can prevent certain athletes uh, information being shared with other people. Um, and this was very useful in terms of having one centralized database to control and help support the athlete through their transition process. The third unique attribute was a mentorship program. And this was through a multiple phased approach. So an athlete being introduced into a mentorship program where he was provided with a mentor who helped look after him, helped introduce him to the different aspects of being a professional athlete. The athlete then transitioned and learned about being a mentor himself and finally became a mentor for somebody else. The aim of this mentorship program was to keep retention and knowledge of the sport and the athletes' uh, entourage, being the coaches, being the sports science, sports medicine team, to help keep all this information within the sport so that we could help grow the program going forward. So, these three unique attributes are great by themselves, but they don't do anything by themselves. They need to be incorporated in a bigger picture. But, so what we did is we put together a holistic program. It's a hypothetical program, and we called it On Track. So it's an On Track Athlete Career Transition Program. And we're gonna take you through this program, the framework of it, and then we're gonna explain to you in a real life example how it works. So we had a vision, and in the vision, the key app part of the vision was equal opportunity. We had a mission, and in this mission was optimal op opportunities being the key aspect of that for the athletes in, this, in the programs. Bear in mind that this program can be used anywhere, and I'll explain to you how. And in the scope, customized program. So what I'd like you to imagine is if this was an IKEA superstore, and you walked in, our program would be the IKEA superstore. There are different categories within the IKEA Superstore, and there are different products within those categories. You don't buy all the product, products in all the categories when you go into the IKEA Superstore. You look for what suits you, based on your requirements, based on your resources, based on your budget, and based on what your objectives are. And that's exactly the analogy I draw to our program. We came up with three key values for our program. It has to be credible, personal, mm -hmm. and flexible. But most important, it's got to have the human touch. An athlete goes through a full career with a coach, entourage, sports science, sports medicine team, and they share a lot of valuable information, they get a lot of valuable support. They share tactics, strategy, rehabilitation, and then all of a sudden their career ends, and they've got to find a job by themselves. They don't have this human touch anymore. They've lost that part. So we put together the on-track program, which had seven attributes which form the holistic approach to this program structure, program promotion, education, life skills, employment, athlete, and entourage. So these seven attributes are what make up the program. These attributes are then further divided into dimensions of each attribute. But first of all, there's three phases to the program. So once you have the on-track attributes, there's a first phase, which is preparation. This is when the athlete enters the program. He's introduced to basic fundamentals. Second part is phase two. He participates in the program. This is where he follows the career path set. And number three, the transition from being an athlete into becoming, you know, uh, going into the career of their choice. So the next slide is just a very brief overview, not for you to look at in terms of understanding what it is, but it's the explanation of having the IKEA Superstore with the different categories and the sub-dimensions. But to explain this further, my colleague Maurizio is going to take you through an example of how we could apply this in real life in a specific country. Okay, so after such eye-opening research and the development of the OnTrack program, we decided to exemplify its implementation 
by, uh, by tackling the Brazilian market, who are hosts of the next Summer Olympic Games. So before we get into the content, it's important to contextualize you and let you know that the Brazilian OC already has an athlete career program in place, which is mostly and almost entirely based in the very successful IOC athlete career program. So our intentions here are exclusively to improve and further qualify this program by adding these attributes that Scott just mentioned and meanwhile making it pertinent to the Brazilian market. So in order to do so, we applied the successful findings of, of the global programs that have successful attributes. And by doing so, we also decided to focus on the three core values that we stand for, which are making it flexible, credible, and, and personal. So by making it modular to the, to the Brazilian market, by making it flexible and personal to each athlete's needs, and also by having the credi credibility that the IOC and the IOC ACP already pass on, we are pretty certain that we're on the right path to have a successful program being implemented at a national level. And furthermore, we also suggest to leave this program as a form of a legacy for the Rio 2016 Olympic Games by the IOC ACP. Now, um, going back to the going back to the. Um, Going back to the, to the content of the program, we thought that the most proper way of introducing you to it would be to in, take you on a journey. And this is the journey of Marcos Vinicius João Meida. Marcos is a 17-year-old professional Brazilian archer who has a brilliant career ahead of him. Actually, I'll take that back. Marcos is a 17-year-old Brazilian adolescent who has a brilliant athletic career ahead of him. But after that, his, doubt, his future is very doubtful and very uncertain. As you can see, Marcos has already achieved more than many can ever dream of at only the age of 17. But that doesn't guarantee him a comfortable future. So Marcos was introduced to the program last year when he was introduced to the preparation stage, which is the initial stage of the on-track program. Here, Marcos would have the opportunity to undertake and know what it means and the importance of a dual career, meanwhile also having a strong educational emphasis, while accordingly progressing in his sport. So as soon as Marcos was introduced to the program, he was introduced to the mentorship and the secondary school career guidance program. There, he had, he had access to his first mentor, which is the career plan mentor, someone who helped him develop a personalized plan based on his interests and qualities, observed at the moment, but that would continually be refined throughout the years as new ones were observed and developed. Secondly, Marcos was introduced to the big brother. The big brother is someone who literally is supposed to take Marcos under his arm. Here what we mean is he already has a career mentor, he needs a big brother, someone who will take him under the arm and help him build his character and his identity Meanwhile, learning from his previous experience as a professional athlete and helping him have a smooth transition into the prof more professional and senior level of competition. Following that, Marcos will be introduced to perhaps the most important tool of the on-track program, which is the over-the-top platform. The over-the-top platform is a student-athlete and entourage interactive platform, which will look something like this. So here, Marcos has the opportunity of accessing everything that encompasses student-athlete career, from knowing when he has medical appointments, knowing when he has training sessions, of offerings of workshops to attend, and even um, language classes, which in his case are exceptionally important since he's an international athlete with such a prolific young career. Most importantly, what's import uh, um, in this tool, Anyone from his entourage has access, and they have individual access to the individual aspects of the career that this, he, he takes role with with, this, with the student. So, going on, Marcos is now 18, and he's about to go to university. But he's decided to postpone the university for a year, until after the Summer Olympic Games in Rio next year. But nonetheless, it's time to introduce him to the on-track friendly university network. This network is a network that comprises both of local and international universities and tertiary education schools, 
which have a very big expertise on meeting student athletes specific needs and requirements. As we all know, they have different flexibility and schedule compared to regular students. So here, what Marco has to gain from is you'll have access to staff, administration, professors from these universities to be able to see if this university fits and meets his requirements. Meanwhile, also having access to other students who have been part of or are still part of these universities for the same reason, to see if they have the perfect fit for him. Marcos is now 18 and potentially an Olympic medalist. Despite such great success, Marcos knows that he can't change his career plan because he knows his future is not still guaranteed for him. Regardless, Marcos has concluded his secondary school studies, is about to start his university, and continue his journey within the On Track Brazil program. Recognizing that Marcos is at the peak years of his sporting career, it's important to diminish the workload that the OnTrack program has to offer, seeing that he has a very demanding training and schedule, and focusing exclusively and continuously on the development of his life skills. So here, Marcos will be introduced to his professional mentor and transition coach. Contrary to the previous phase, when he was introduced to a big brother, now he has someone who's more oriented to his academic interests and qualities. Someone who preferably works in the industry he desires to work on, work in one day. And this is when we're introduced and elite and retired athletes have the opportunity to stop the clock. This is a very important moment and perhaps the most important context of the entire program. As it means that athletes can stop the clock and what they're doing to give back to the program and therefore, they're all able, able to contribute to a program that has given them so much. And this is what gives them the human touch, these individual relationships that are created, which ensure the professional continuous development of both the athlete and the mentor, whilst maintaining the cultural education within the organization and also creating lifetime bonds. That's what we like to call the human touch. Moving on, Marcos is now has either achieved or is attempting to achieve his sporting career goals. Regardless, he knows it's time to transition into the next phase of his life, and therefore the third phase of the program, the transition phase. Here, Marcos will continue to participate actively in his sport, but he will also have close to equal commitment to preparing himself for the industry he deserves to pursue a job in. So, he will continue his work with his professional mentor and coach, which will take him through the confirmation stage. The confirmation stage is encompassed of three steps. The career selection before transition stage, where he will attend uh, workshops to spark his interest in different areas. In the introduction to the transition industry expert, well, he will have a detailed post-career plan developed based on his, his, his desire and his uh, desired industry. And most importantly, he will be able and have the opportunity to participate on shadow programs which will give him a real feel about what it is like to work in the industry he, he desires to for a longer period of time. After that, Marcos will then have access to all the job application support he needs with CV writing, mock interviews, anything needed to be able to achieve the job he desires. Meanwhile, also having access to what we call the on-track healthy lifestyle, which ensures that they have a smooth transition for the mind and the body. And at this time, the entourage participation is very important since it's a very crucial and delicate time for athletes. Marcos is, has now concluded the on track probe. He is now ready to stop the clock and share his newly acquired knowledge with the next generation of talented athletes to come. But most importantly, Marcos is now ready to give back to the program that has once given him so much. A wise man once said, the test of our progress is not whether we add to the abundance of those who have much, whether it's to provide enough for those who have too little. Clock's ticking. <laughs> and it's up to you to stop the clock. 